It is time once again to make the trolls get in the comments. Like, Lainey have to make everything about being gay. Hey there, creepy peeps. My name is Nightmare Maven. Welcome back to my channel and to another Horror Education. Horror Education is a series on my channel where I explore movies, books, topics in horror through the lens of being a gay person. It's mostly for my own education and I thought some of y'all might like it as well. So here we are. Really all my channel is at this point, just doing videos I wanna do and hoping somewhere out there in internet land, some other people wanna watch it as well. <laughs> But to go ahead and answer that question, why do I have to make everything about being gay? I would answer that while LGBTQ plus representation is getting better, it definitely has not always been great. Plus LGBTQ plus people have always been around, always. And in a representation desert, we seek out themes in movies, books, TV shows, whatever have you. That speak to our experiences. So even if something isn't outright queer, there are quite a few movies that have developed cult followings, especially like queer cult followings because of certain themes that people have picked up on that they can relate to. <laughs> and discussing the 1985 horror classic Fright Night perfectly showcases these things and makes it a perfect candidate for a horror education video. So on its surface, Fright Night is a story about a teen boy, Charlie, who thinks his new neighbor is a vampire, and he recruits the help of an old horror TV host, Peter Vincent, to defeat the blood-sucking fiend. But the film has since earned a spot on nearly every internet list of LGBTQ plus horror films because of the subtextual queer plot and cast of queer actors. At the very least, this movie is also just considered queer friendly because of inclusions of lines like Charlie's mom saying, I hear he has a live-in carpenter. With my luck, he's probably gay, which honestly is a really non-judgmental way to say that, especially for the 80s. Director Tom Holland has said in interviews that the subtext in the movie is intentional as he was writing the film at the beginning of the AIDS epidemic. And he said, quote, all of that fed into Fright Night, but subtly. I realized with that quote, I think Tom Holland and I, and definitely some other people of the internet as well, have a different definition of subtle. The film could be viewed, how I view it really, as Charlie, wanting to come out of the closet. But clearly obsessed with his attractive male neighbor from the start. In, at the beginning of the film, Charlie is kissing Amy and he gets distracted by two men with a large package. <laughs> like, <laughs> the subtext isn't writing itself, folks. And the next day at school, we see a scene where Amy stomps away angrily from Charlie and Evil Ed takes a jab at Charlie saying, did she finally find out what you're really like? And literally does a wink wink. <laughs> In fact, the entire movie has Amy throwing herself at Charlie who claimed he wanted to have sex with her and Charlie just shutting it down because of his new hot neighbor, Jerry Dandridge. And speaking of Jerry, his entire dialogue is double entendre. <laughs> like the scene in the alleyway uh, with Evil Ed when Jerry tells him he knows what it's like being different, I'll make sure no one picks on you anymore, etc. And yes, Jerry is an evil vampire, but the scene is almost sweet in its understanding of not feeling like you fit in to a heteronormative society. And as I showed earlier, Stephen Jeffries, who plays Evil Ed, is an out person in real life and has said that he approached this scene in the alleyway with the mindset of evil ed coming out of the closet and jerry kind of comforting him in a way and vampires have always been seen as like a sexy thing <laughs> and pretty much every vampire almost every vampire in cinema ever is insanely good looking <laughs> the camera hams this up in fright night with the help of the male gaze I've talked about the male gaze on male bodies before, i.e. men creating shots of male bodies that they think women find attractive. But ultimately, because men are creating this shot, it's just a male fantasy of male bodies. A pretty common camera movement when talking about the male gaze is a camera pan that usually starts from like the feet or the legs and pans all the way up the body as if we're giving a character a once over. The scene when Charlie comes home to find his mother has invited Jerry in, 
Charlie looks over to the chair and the camera pans up Chris Sarandon's body starting at the feet as he's just like lounging in this chair all sexily, just draped over this chair and Charlie is checking him out essentially. The camera tends to pan up Chris Sarandon's body a few times in the movie, kind of just driving this home. And of course we have to quickly mention Jerry's companion, Billy. Jerry and Billy play like the most loving couple in this movie. Like the way that they look at each other throughout the film, we all know on the surface it's them both knowing that Jerry is a vampire, so that's why they're looking at each other the way they do, but it also reads as them just being a couple and they're in love with each other. The double meaning is so loud. We even have scenes like when Billy is tending to Jerry's hand wound and the framing of the, <laughs> you cannot, tell me that it wasn't intentional. There's no way you could frame this shot without knowing what it looks like when Billy is tending to Jerry's hand wound and Jerry is standing and Billy is kneeling right in front of him and the way the camera decides to sit like disagree with anything else in this video except for that scene. There's no way that wasn't intentional. <laughs> And speaking about like the queer legacy of Fright Night, I do want to mention the remake actually really quick <laughs> because we do have a few hints of this subtext in that movie as well. The remake, Charlie lives in constant fear that his new cool status may be ruined if people find out about the videos he used to make with his friends. And at one point in the remake, Evil Ed threatens Charlie saying, do you want me to tell them how well we really know each other? Charlie is afraid if people found out about that, he would lose his popular girlfriend and therefore his cover as a completely heterosexual guy. And while remake Jerry doesn't have a live-in carpenter, he does drop subtle hints to Charlie, like the recognition of the color puce, which Charlie's straight friends did not recognize. And they're very awkward and charged interaction when Jerry comes over to borrow some beer. The way Jerry is talking about women in this scene reads a lot like somebody who is so desperately trying to come across as straight. That's just my interpretation of the movie, but it's just so, it's so pointed. <laughs> Although I would agree that the queer subtext in the remake is not quite as strong as it is in the original. The original is its own special thing that I've grown an appreciation for now being able to explore it through a queer lens. Let me know your thoughts on the queer subtext of Fright Night in the comments and if there's anything I missed or if there's anything else you picked up on in the movie, please let me know. As usual, you can let me know of any other queer movies, books, TV shows that you'd like to see covered in a future education video. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. It does help me out. You can subscribe, become a creepy peep today. I post two videos every week. It's all horror all the time. So I'll see you this weekend with a new video. Until then, stay strange. Bye.